You've had some questions about my torch setup and how I light the torch with the little pilot light system. And I thought I would talk about torches today, specifically oxy fuel torches. And for me, that's either oxyacetylene or oxypropane. Both are good options in the blacksmith shop. Now the torch body that I use, I've got a couple of these. They're the Victor 100 series torch. This is just the first torch I ever owned. And when I wanted a second one, I just bought the same thing because I was happy with the first one. There are lots of other good torches on the market, so I'm not saying you ought to go run out and buy Victor torches. And a torch body like this can be used for smaller welding tips that just have a single orifice on them and get pinpoint accuracy. They can also be used with a big heating tip that gets a broader area hot, or they can be used with a cutting head. I have cutting heads for these torches, but if I'm using a cutting torch, I actually prefer a straight cutting torch. This is another Victor product. It says it's an SC900FC. Now, I rarely use a cutting torch any, anymore. It's something that is good if you're cutting up a lot of scrap stuff, if you've got really odd things to cut up. But for the most part, I probably don't use this once a year on the average anymore. It used to get used a whole lot. Now I keep quick connects on the valves over on the wall that we'll take a look at in just a second. And that way I can just put the hoses on when I need them and I don't have hoses around that I risk burning. It's kind of a small cramped location over there by the vise. And I don't want to leave torch hoses out if I'm not actually using the torch on a regular basis. Now these valves are referred to as gas saver valves. The ones I have are made by Smith. There are some others out there, but I've never been able to find them for sale when I was looking. So the Smith valve is the one that I buy. The pilot light structure is different for the acetylene versus the propane. So I need one both for the acetylene side and one for the propane side. And these are shut off if I'm not actually using it. There's no gas flowing through the propane side. It's all over here on the acetylene side right now. But it has a pilot light and that pilot light is adjustable, although the the little tube you adjust gets really hot, so once it's lit, make sure you're wearing gloves or use a little pair of pliers to adjust it. Then it has this arm, and this arm is a valve. So right now there is no gas flowing through the torch. I can't light the torch because the valve is off, but when I lift it, but when there's weight off the arm, You can light that, and that means you're not constantly relighting and adjusting the torch. And in a smaller shop where you're going to need to heat something with a torch, put it down, set a rivet or a tenon, something like that, maybe make a bend or a twist, then light the torch again and go back and forth, and you're doing that dozens of times over the course of an hour or whatever time frame you're working on that part of your project, you really do save a lot of time and a lot of fuel not having to readjust the torch every time. Your settings just stay the same. Pilot light uses a minimal amount of fuel. You could probably run it for a week and use less fuel than you would use in an hour of actually working with a torch. Now I have had some questions in the past from people who are concerned about the safety of the gas saver valves. I don't think that's really a problem. These things are made from, for industry and industry has much stricter safety regulations than most of us have in our own shops. And I don't think they would still be selling these if they were dangerous. I think they would have been sued and they would take this product off the market. But if it makes you nervous, don't use it. One of the big concerns people have is what if it gets knocked off the hook? Well, if it gets knocked off, pick it up and hang it back up. You shouldn't be leaving these things totally unattended, even though I might hang that back up, come over here, set a rivet. I'm going right back to it. If it falls off the hook when I set it up there, it's only going to be on the ground for a few seconds. But I also can't imagine that's a big problem. If you hang it up and it's hanging there when you walk away from it, it's not going to fall off. They don't just jump up and jump on the ground and they don't light themselves spontaneously or any of that kind of stuff. Falling off shouldn't be a problem. If you have other people in your shop that are going to take the torch off and set it down, you probably ought to shut this system down while you're in the shop. And maybe if those are your employees, you ought to get better employees that are a little bit more safety conscious. It's like anything else in blacksmithing. There's always a risk, and you have to manage your own risks. If you think this piece of equipment isn't safe for whatever's going on in your shop, the grandkids come into your shop, you got dogs that are rambunctious and knock things over, maybe having a torch set up like this isn't what you should have. 
But there's probably lots of other things in the shop that are way more dangerous and way bigger risk than a torch with a pilot light to light it. Now the torches that I'm using with the quick connects over here on these gas saver valves, I keep 12 foot hoses on. That's enough for working in the vise, working at the anvil, and right here where I'm at right now. It is not enough to take the torch other places in the shop, and there are times that would be convenient. You can certainly set these valves up on a portable torch cart. I used to have it that way, but it takes up a little bit more space than this system does, and in this shop, space is becoming a real issue, and I want to keep things as compact as I can. So the bottles are just secured to the wall, and the valves are mounted on the tool rack, and that means I've kind of tethered to that spot when I'm using the torch. If I need to go further with a torch, I do have a hose reel. The hose reel is only hooked up to the propane side, and it is not hooked up to one of the gas saver valves. So the torch has to be lit and shut off as you use it. So if you're at the far end of the shop, I can set a torch up over there and use it on the propane side. I just have to light it every time I need it. And this has the same quick connects on it that the other hoses do. So I can plug one of my other leads in here, or I have quick connects on my cutting torch, which is what this gets used for most. And I have a couple of other torches that are kind of special purpose. This is a Hinrob torch, and in spite of the bulk of the handle, this is a very precise, fine torch. It only uses four pounds of acetylene, four pounds of oxygen for all of the different tip sizes. So as you go up, you just change tips. You don't have to change the pressure. So this really conserves gas if you're doing smaller, more delicate welds. This is great if you're putting leaves on a rose, something like that, or other organic branchy sort of things that need lots of little welds on it. And it does have a cutting setup, but it's an inline setup. There's not a general preheat flame that surrounds the oxygen jet. The oxygen jet is one, there's just one preheat flame and then the oxygen jet is right behind it. So you always have to travel in a perfect line. If you're turning a corner, you can't just move the torch sideways. You've got to actually turn it to keep those flames aligned just right. Just a bit of a learning curve, but it will, but it will cut. My other little one is a little aircraft torch. It'd be a good jewelry torch, although it's a little bigger than a lot of jewelers would need. But it's a nice small torch. Again, this one is acetylene only. I don't have any propane tips for either one of these. I don't even know if they make propane tips for them. There's a lot more stuff available in acetylene than there is propane. Which brings up the question, why have one versus the other and why do I have both? Well, I started off with acetylene. At the time, that's what was common. Propane was kind of an unusual thing. You didn't hear about hardly anybody using propane that long ago. So all of my stuff was meant for acetylene, acetylene regulators, hoses, torch bodies, and all of my torch tips. The big difference between acetylene and propane equipment is the tips. You can run propane through acetylene torch bodies, regulators, hoses. You shouldn't, but you can but propane will not burn properly through the acetylene tips. So if you've got a cutting torch and you want to cut, you'll need an assortment of propane tips for your cutting torch, and you'll need an assortment of other tips depending on what it is you're trying to do with propane. So if you've already got acetylene, there's a big added expense going to the propane because you need to change over all those tips or duplicate what you have, which is essentially what I've done. Now I say you shouldn't run propane through your acetylene regulators, your acetylene hoses. They say that's bad for them. I know a lot of people who do it when they switch to propane, all they did was buy new tips. They did not buy new regulators, new hoses, and they seem to get away with it. But because I duplicated my system, the regulator I have on my propane side is meant for propane. The hoses are meant for propane. And you can run acetylene through propane hoses. You're just not supposed to do the other way around. Propane gets colder and it might make the diaphragms in your regulator brittle or something like that. But I tend to prefer to go with the manufacturer's recommendations. And if they say something's not rated for propane and I've got to buy something new anyways, I'll just get the propane version. But what's the big advantage of propane? Propane is way cheaper than acetylene, and acetylene gets more expensive all the time. You can do a lot of torch work with propane before you pay the same amount that you would for a fill on your acetylene cylinder. 
Propane uses more oxygen, so you're going to go through oxygen faster, but oxygen is not as expensive as the acetylene. So cost-wise, you're still money ahead burning propane versus acetylene. One of the big downsides to propane is it does not heat as fast. If you watch the recent videos where he's using a torch to heat the bars for the gate project, I started that with propane, but it was taking a long time to get the pieces hot and they were not getting as hot as I would have liked them. I switched to acetylene, heated in a fraction of the time, and I got a higher heat on them, even though I was using a smaller acetylene tip than what I was using a propane tip. So acetylene is hotter, it's faster. Propane, because it requires so much oxygen, you don't get the good neutral flame that you do with acetylene, and it doesn't quite get as hot as with acetylene, so it's not good for welding. If you're gonna be doing welding with a torch, you really need to have acetylene available to weld. And that's what these torches are used for mostly is welding. So, I'm, so I don't really need propane tips for these. How much cheaper is propane to run? You know, I really can't tell you. I've never done a side-by-side -side comparison or tried to figure out how much I use a torch in a year. For the most part, I only fill up an acetylene bottle about once a year. Doing this railing project, I burned through the one that was already on the torch, and I'm well into the second bottle. So I'm gonna to have to fill up two this year. But to get the project done the way I want it to, to be a little bit more efficient, better use of time, do better work, it's worth spending the extra money on the acetylene, at least in my opinion. The other downside to propane, and I've already mentioned this, you have to buy propane tips. Most welding shops, don't carry the propane tips, or at least the ones around here, don't carry the propane tips in stock. Why? They sell acetylene. They want you to buy acetylene, so they sell parts for an acetylene torch. If you want to buy the tips, you usually have to order them special, mail order them, buy them online somewhere, but they're not something you just go down to your local welding supplier and say, I need a cutting tip for this size material, and you get the cutting tip for your propane torch. You're going to have to think ahead for that. And in my experience, you tend to pay more money for the tips. So even you figure that I started with an acetylene setup. I still have the original regulators that I've always had, the original torch bodies. I've never burned through and had to throw out an acetylene tip. All the ones I bought ages ago are still good, still usable. But to go to propane to save that money on the fuel gas, I have invested hundreds of dollars in regulators, hoses, a new gas saver valve, and an assortment of both propane tips for both heating and cutting. And probably it will take me 10 or 15 years worth of saving money by burning propane before I ever recoup the cost of all that equipment. So in a lot of ways, I don't think propane was the best decision for me. I have it now, and I'm going to keep using it. If all I need is a little bit of heat, there's no reason to burden the acetylene. But when I need the high heat, I need the welding heat. And I'm not at all reluctant to burn acetylene if that's the thing that gets the job done the best. So it's best for you and your shop. Just depends on your situation. If you're just getting started, you're buying your first torch, and you're just going to use it for some heating purposes. Maybe you're using it to make sure your twists are even. That's a great use for a torch. If you've got hot and cold spots coming out of the forge, you can heat the colder spots and get your twists to come out even. And we'll look at that some more when we get to that part of the gate project. Propane is excellent for that. A lot of people really prefer using propane on their cutting torches, even though it seems to have a slower preheat time. But that comes down to a matter of preference. So if you're just getting started and you start with propane, it's probably not a bad way to go. But if you're planning on welding, if you want the higher heat, or if you already own an acetylene setup, yeah, I don't know that I would recommend going to propane. Might not be a bad idea. You have to evaluate your situation. But personally, I don't think it was the best decision for me. Even though I've got a 500 gallon propane tank in the yard and they deliver the propane, I have to load up and drive to town to fill the acetylene cylinders, which for me is probably the biggest advantage to propane. Anyway, I hope that answers some of your questions. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.